So the trick for that is just scan the model with the bridge, as we did in this case, and you will see what to do then. And I'm again using the same case, just hitting design. So you may have realized it's actually not exactly the same case, to be honest. We copied the complete case just for this demonstration, but it's all the same files, so it works this way. So it starts the same way, obviously, because it's the same case. But I'm just switching to expert mode. And I can use um, here the add remove mesh function. And I'm actually adding the new scan now as an extra jaw scan. An extra jaw scan gives, a, gives you the possibility to uh, merge several jaws to one jaw for if you have different scans of the same jaw and on one this part is good and on one this. You may want to do this. And we have here a file, subtle called new upper jaw. And it's just another upper jaw with the finished bridge, with the milled linguals, the attachments all ready with the pre C vertex parts on it. And I'm going to say that's OK. And if I start to wizard now, still the last uh, step starts, which is the pre-op positioning. I'm going to ignore this for this, uh, for this part. And now I have to align the new jaw scan with the old model. And for this, I try to rotate them in the same direction and choose one point on both of them. I think this here. And it aligns them automatically. And if I now hit Next, it's going to ask me if I actually want to merge them. And I want to. And um, it warns me about that, because I won't be able to revert this change. And so now this is my model. And I could now start the virtual articulator, the whole shebang again. And you see in the model, because those are merged, there's parts floating inside, like the old dies. I can correct this. I won't need to correct this, but I'm still going to show to you how, uh, how to do this. I'm switching to the expert mode, because maybe you want to use this for some other application, like the model creator, where this could pose a problem. And now I'm choosing the um, oh, right-clicking and choose the edit meshes. And it actually asks me which one I want to change. So um, I'm choosing the first one. And the easiest way, because I have several parts floating inside of here, like you see here, it's a bit hard to see, um, is just selecting by click on surface and crop it. And now everything that's not connected to this mesh is gone. And you could use it for anything else, for printing or whatever. So, oh. <laughs> That's bad. <laughs> That's really bad. <laughs> OK, just not do that. And click on expert instead, how I planned to. <laughs> and you can actually um, save a mesh at any given time to an STL file. And because this is just one single mesh now, I'm going to save this to a file. I'm, I'm going to overwrite the old upper jaw. And this has a simple reason, because I'm going to start the partial framework software now. And the partial framework software will just take the model, which is named like the upper jaw. And if I replace it, it will take this model instead. And because I am um, matched it already in the software, I'm not going to save that, um, it's at the same position as well. And all the important parts will be on the right positions too. So this way, I only had to rescan one model and can still use all the old data. So I'm clicking on the partial framework. Um, how many of you have used the partial framework software up till now? OK, oh, not that many. Um, you may realize it looks a bit different, but it's based on the same logic most of the time. The difference is that you have the wizard down here, and you have the expert mode up here. And you're going to see how this works now. The first thing is that you want to set your insertion direction for the partial framework. So I'm going to hide some parts for that, the antagonist, and also the imported parts, which are actually bridges and the dummies we said before. You will be able to see them better later on. And I have to choose the insertion direction 
obviously based on the attachment part. So I'm choosing this one, set it from view. And here I can also activate the draft angle, and I'm going to activate one of one, um, one degree is okay, I think. So, obviously, um, we have the draft angle, as you might have seen, at zero degrees, but many people say, I want one or two degrees. It's a bit of a subjective taste, what you want to have. And now you have your model refractory. See here, in blue, the block out. And I can edit this, actually, in the next step. Now I'm just surveying it. If, I'm not, if I don't like what I see, I could ch still change it. So now I'm editing it because for the clasps, I may be able to get into the undercuts. And as I've told you before, this tooth here, there's no chance you won't be able to get an undercut in this tooth. It's a lost cause. Luckily, we have the attachments for most of the, of the fit for the grasp of the partial, but here we can actually get one. And also, the attachments themselves, because um, I added a, a block out angle of one degree, those are as well blocked out by one degree, but you wouldn't, you wouldn't want that. So I'm just taking all of this away. So the tool is actually a really crude smudging of the, of the, of the wax. And afterwards, for a better fit and uh, easier handling for the patient, I can uh, down here use the smooth and add some material up on the attachments. So in the end, it will, be, it will fit better. So that's it for that, and I'm going to the next step again. So now I'm drawing um, connectors and meshes. This means I'm drawing the big connector in the middle, and the um, retention meshes for our um, acrylic teeth in the end. And for this, I can show my important parts again. And you see here, there's the, the dummy teeth here, and there's also the bridge. Because if I design a bridge or a crown, it gets imported as well, and it can be used as well. I'm glad you're here, but if you were in the German room, you would actually see this function. I'm not going to show it to you, because here we have a different kind of workflow. So I'm drawing first some um, retention meshes, only on those parts here, because this tooth and this one will uh, become metal dummies later on. So just like this, and the other retention over here. So and now I'm drawing the big connector. I could also draw some metal stops in here, but I don't need them in that case. The, the major connector should, I guess, look something like this. I know there's many, many different schools um, on how to design a partial framework, so please don't be angry with me if it doesn't look like you would want it to. <laughs> I, you could actually um, also make a, a skeletal plate out of that. I'm not a fan of it, but you can do that um, by just drawing another line in here, and it will be cut out. The same way you could just draw a line here, and then you will get set metal stops. But for this case, I think this looks good. Maybe I can edit it a bit, because I can always click Edit Curve down here. Because later on, if the patient may lose this tooth, if you design a partial like that, you will, it will be easier to replace it. OK, so I'm happy with my design. Maybe not completely, but whoever is happy with their own designs. So to the next step. And now I'm placing the retention mesh. You see here are some arrows. I can move this around. And using the arrows further out, I can turn this mesh and actually also change the size. But I can, on a classical way, also press settings down here. And I can just choose several settings for the retention meshes. Maybe I want a square retention mesh, but I personally prefer the round ones. What I also can set here is the major connector. And you see here those orange boxes telling you which curve 
uh, got recognized at which part. And it works really well because the software seems, always seems to know what you want to design at the place you, do, you did. Because it realized itself which are the mesh uh, risers and which are the major connectors. For the major connector, I have some parameters as well. I can use different uh, stipple patterns, I like the coarse one, for instance. You can actually also activate a linear falloff at the ends of the uh, major connector. I personally like to do that as well. It's different for everybody. When I press apply, it just calculates the design of the, of the partial framework for now. So, as you may have realized, I, um, I didn't place the major connector inside the, the later metal dummies, but you will see what happens with them next. So this is our design for now, and I'm pretty happy with that. Um, what you have to know is if you design the curves, the curves, the major connector and um, the retentions actually have to overlap or there's a gap in between, so, and you wouldn't want that. So on to the next step where I draw my clasps. And this is pretty easy. I just choose the first tooth and start clicking away. And just draw my clasp point by point. This again is something um, where there's many, many different schools of thought how a clasp has actually to look. But I hope this one isn't that bad. And with a double click, I just end the curve. And then I, just, I draw the next curve. The clasp isn't finished yet, but at first I have to draw all of the curves. For this one, I think I'm going like this. And you could actually draw as many curves as you want, but in this case, we only have two. So they're finished. Now to the next step, where I actually apply the clasps. And just click on one of them. And it gives me um, an, a shape of an anterior clasp, but I will change it to a posterior clasp, which, which is a little bit thicker, as you see. And I can still um, pull those points around a bit and reshape the clasp. But this looks good, for me at least. <laughs> then I apply it. I do the same for the other clasp. Just click on it. Maybe change the shape, as you may have seen. There's also ring or round wire parts. But normally, if I change the shape once, it stays the same if I not change it again. So. so those are the clasps. It's pretty basic, straightforward. And now I have a, a tool to fill in some wax. And the way this works is that it only fills in wax directly on the refractory. So I have here a thickness. If I try to fill it somewhere where there's already thicker wax, you won't see it because it's lower. But we will do this later, because now I'm first, the first time switching to the expert mode. And the expert mode looks a bit like this. It's just a plethora of tools. And you see here the basic tools. Those are actually all the steps you would get in the wizard. You can rearrange them in any way you want to. And the expert tools are like special tools like um, retention beads or um, retention bars, more support bars, everything. But I'm using this because now I have the option to just draw a curve wherever I want. And I want to draw a curve around the multilingual and um, the rotation lock to fill it in with wax. And you see here in gray the important bridge, the imported bridge. And I'm just going to hide that because I'm not going to use this one. So like this, and I start drawing away just a curve around the whole milled lingual. You could also just um, use, the, uh, use the clone tool to draw wax over it, but this is um, a bit of personal preference. I like designing it this way. And then first, I'm drawing both of those curves. So just like that. And now I can actually choose any option um, to what to do with those curves. I could potentially fill retention beads there. I'm not going to do that because it makes no sense. But I'm choosing a connector, a major connector. And the first one gets selected as a major connector. And here I can change the settings. And I'm using a stipple pattern, which is smooth, and making it a little bit thinner. Like 
0.6. And if I apply that, it just gets filled up like this. But since it's a bit complicated and unusual shape for a major connector, to be honest, it gets a little bit rough on some parts. But we can correct that easily later. Now the next curve automatically gets selected. And I'm applying again because I didn't change any settings now. And now I'm switching back to the wizard, which now is uh, down here in the right-hand corner. You see, switching to the expert modes just opens up all the different um, tools at once. So it's a little bit confusing. So the wizard helps you get just through a normal design. So the, the fill in wax clone actually is lagging. OK. Yeah. <laughs> um, actually, is a bit like uh, the, the freeform tool, a little bit. Um, you actually just add wax to your model, to your refractory. And you have different presets here, like the occlusal rest. And you just use it. Click it and draw your occlusal rest just here. I'm doing the same. The other tooth. So I try to work um, always um, with the same kind of um, stuff I try to build. So I have first, I'm drawing all occlusal rests. Now I'm, oh, whatever I did I do. I didn't really look what I was doing, to be honest. <laughs> So now, <laughs> yeah, well, this happens in designs. So just like that. Then again from here. And now I'm connecting the clasps to the retention mesh, with the, minor, uh, the minor connector, just like that. I can also, as you see, just draw on the mesh itself. For that, there's also the preset mesh, which is exactly the same thickness. So here again. Just fill in the mesh a little bit for more stability. So like this. Maybe a bit too much, but I think you get the idea. And now I'm filling up here. And for that, because I want to have a base around here, I'm hiding the important part, the imported parts. I want to be sure that in the end, the, the partial completely fits around this attachment. So I'm, I think I'm taking the occlusal rest because it's really thin, and just add material all around here. So this way, I can ab be absolutely sure that it will fit, that there won't be any gaps in the end. So it may look a little bit weird, but it will look good in the end. And the same thing I'm doing here with those parts. I can, if there's a hole in it, there's none, so I'll leave it like it is. Here, there's a small one, so I'm just filling up a little bit to be sure it fits. And I add some material all around here. OK, just like that. So and now I'm adding some material here where later the metal dummy will be placed. I'm just drawing a kind of plate underneath of it. Same one for the other metal dummy. So and I'm done with the step. That's all I need. So now I'm drawing the finish lines for our acrylic teeth here. And for that, I just start clicking away, just drawing a finish line however I please. And here I will end it about here at the metal dummy. Doing the same on the other side. And now on the next step, you can actually place those finish lines. And you see them with a little bit uh, they're a little bit conical here, and I can just take them and change the degrees. And they're changing life. You can also start changing the drawn finish line here. The design switches right at this moment. So I think this is good for this side. On the other side, a quick look. Okay. So I'm pulling this out a little bit. But I think I'm happy with the design, yeah. OK, then on to the next step again. 
And now there's a step that's called the add part step, where I can actually add all the um, constructions from before to my design. Normally, if you design a bridge, a crown, like the bridge we designed here, it will get added to your partial framework because it may, may be a secondary crown. So here in the settings, you can choose for every part what's actually happening with it. We have here all the pontics, which are the, the dummies for the acrylic teeth. We have here a bridge. The bridge, if you click on it, is as non-editable. This means it will be imported, but you can't really work on the bridge. I will just use it as a reference. But then again, I have the partial pontix on 1.4, which I want to be editable, so it's part of the, pont uh, the partial, and I can actually form it a little bit. And the same one for the tooth 2.5. Oh, not 2.5. <laughs> That's a reference. 2.4. And if I click to convert to VAX, they will be part of the partial framework at this very moment. So I'm going to the next step. And now I have a, a real freeform option like you're used to. It still works a bit different, but it works also kind of similar. You have here an add, a subtract, also a smooth. And I'm just going to start editing my partial framework on all the parts where I think I didn't really make this, this good of a work. You can see here I can have a really good option to smooth all of this and even start removing the parts where I think that's not needed. The uh, most important thing first is um, to actually smooth your uh, finish line because this has to be really nice in the end. So I'm first smoothing both of, uh, both of them, and then I'm going on to everything else. Then I think I'm trying to smooth the occlusal rest, and it's, uh, it's uh, the same as in the dental cat. I hit Control and um, scroll my walls reel, and you see the smooth level down here just changing. It's the same kind of logic in both of them. So I'm having a little lower smooth level, so I'm not really hurting them, just oh, switching up everything I designed not that nice. And now I can start by adding. But this one's actually already pretty goodly done. And here I add as well. So you see it's a kind of... Um, um, a middle way of adding, but also smoothing at the same way. So it really works like um, a real um, uh, wax knife in the, in the lab would work, which I think is pretty nice. You can also remove the material down here if you want to. So and if you're not happy with um, parts like this, where the material doesn't really um, shine, where there's like um, so-called dirt corners, you can just um, hide the block out and refractory for that. And now you have the option, I'm gonna hide the important parts, um, to actually edit this. And the thing is, if you add, add material here, you might think this will go into my block out part in my refractory, but it actually won't because it will always be blocked out again. So if you have small parts like this, you can simply add material and everything is good. Same here. And this is actually um, one of the big um, positives of the software. Um, you could never do this uh, in real life. If you had a, a, a model where you worked on it, um, used wax to actually design your partial framework, you would never be able to um, correct all those parts here before casting it. So I think I'm happy for now. So this is kind of a finished partial for now. I'm going to the next step. And now I could actually save it for build, which is kind of the same as merging all the parts. But I can now also switch to the expert mode again and use all those different functionalities I have. And there's like really nice ones. What does the clock say? Oh, the clock isn't put on my time. If I'm taking too long, just come on stage, tell me. <laughs> 
maybe Noki will come in here, <laughs> get on stage like he did yesterday. So um, because I have the metal dummies here, and maybe I want to use um, some kind of veneering technique with an acrylic. I'm just drawing a curve here. I'm doing the same one for the other, uh, for the other metal dummy. So it only, uh, those only end up as being um, metal backings, not complete metal dummies. And now there's an option here. You see there's a plethora of tools. And there's an option here where I can emboss something. And I'm just choosing a curve. And I have here a thickness of one millimeter. And it will just emboss one millimeter of material there. You see? I'm using the same one here. And now I'm not happy with this. So I'm just choosing my Edit Wax tool again and smooth this whole area just a little bit. Do the same one on the other one. You see, it's like really fast and smooth. I actually really like the tool for that. So, and what you can do now, if you start searching here, <laughs> there's all the curves I, I designed before. I can just activate them again so I see them again. And I can reuse them for other functionalities like retention beads. Just click on the curve, click on apply. And there's retention beads there. Those are a little bit small, to be honest. Don't know why I did it like that. But let's make them a little bit bigger and a little bit more. OK, just maybe a bit too much. <laughs> but now you have retention beads there, and you can add any kind of um, veneering, acrylic, or whatever you want to use, maybe not ceramics. So. And one thing you can do as well for while we're talking about retentions is actually uh, add retention posts for your acrylic teeth. So I can show all my imported parts again. And here there's an option just to add posts. I can click here. There it is. And I can just switch the length up a little bit and apply it. And I do the same for every teeth. And then again, I personally would really like to just um, look at the tooth, and I'm just changing the height a little bit so you don't have this, this giant post looking out of your acrylic tooth at the end. But you see, it gets, it's really fast with that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, another option you have, does the time save? No. I'm showing you one other thing. <laughs> Another option you have is to add uh, text and pictures. And here you can choose some several pictures, like a random logo from a random company. I don't know. <laughs> maybe your company, maybe mine. Whatever pleases you. You could actually add the name of the patient there, because if you lose a partial framework and there's a name on it, it's way easier to find it. So here I can change how much it will get lowered or raised up. I'm just lowering it a little bit. You can also add, te add text here. I can put in nearly anything. Just rotate it a little bit and apply. So, and at the end, you switch to the wizard and save it for a bit. And then you have your STL. Thank you for listening.